alongside me our two new co-hosts this year for the 2015 season. I'd like to bring in the seven-time AMA Grand National Champion, winner of 78 Grand National victories. To my far right, it is Chris Carr. Chris, welcome to FansChoice.tv. Uh, it's good to be here, Scotty. It's great to be in Daytona to kick off the 2015 AMA Grand National Championship. I tell you what, it's nothing like being in Daytona to start the year. The weather's perfect. Uh, we've got a great great night of racing coming up. We sure do. And our third member of our team is Miss Danny Medine, and she is right here beside us. Danny, welcome down here. You're, you're a former hill cross champion. You, you rode some snow cross. Welcome down here to the heat from one extreme to the other. What do you think of dirt track so far? Well, first, thank you for having me, and I'm so excited to meet all the new fans, racers, teams, crew. This is a great place for me. I love racing. First time in Daytona, first time at flat track. So I am in for quite the show. You are in for quite the show. Qualifying practice has just wrapped up a few moments ago. They're doing a lot of track maintenance right now. Uh, Chris, were there any surprises in our qualifying practice for your, in your opinion? Really no surprises. Uh, veterans toward the front uh, for the most part. Uh, if there's anything in the top 10, Wyatt Anderson, 90W in ninth, uh, puts in a good run to, uh, to start off his 2015 campaign. But other than that, uh, business as usual as of right now. So the fans are lined up to come in here in just a few moments. The open paddock area scheduled from 6.15 until 7.15. Gates are just open. Danny, it's your first chance to meet the fans as they come filing through the gate here. It's a good opportunity here at AMA Pro Flat Track. Unlike a lot of other sports, the fans come in before the races, and they're more than welcome to come in after the races, meet our riders, meet the stars of tonight's AMA Pro Grand National Flat Track. Uh, you're going to meet a lot of the stars, too, here coming up in just a few minutes. What are you most excited for here tonight? Geez, that's a big question. You know, GNC1 and GNC2 based off qualifying were actually pretty similar. We were talking about uh, qualifying times earlier and there wasn't a huge difference. I'm just excited to see some action. I'm excited to see how close these guys run together. I'm excited to see good racing, maybe some good battles. Hopefully not a lot of drama and everybody leaves here in one piece. Well, we're at a short track race, so there's going to be drama. There's going to be contact, Chris Carr. Uh, it's a contact sport for sure. You talked about earlier during the qualifying time practice, a lot of riders wear their motocross gear. Some of them are going to leave with a little bit less skin, especially on their left elbow from tires rubbing them. Uh, it's going to be a great night of racing. All the riders are now qualified and set for tonight's program. You know, it's, it's very interesting. Everybody went out kind of watch their own P's and Q's leading into the, uh, into practice to try and get the best time. They kind of gave each other some room. There wasn't a whole lot of passing. So it was kind of single file for the la for a couple of hours there. Coming up at 8 o'clock when the heat races start, they're going to line them up six abreast in three, rows of three, and they're going to let them, let them go for it. And all of a sudden, that, that, that blue groove going into turn one is going to get a lot narrower. Now in the GNC2 class, who are some big names that the fans, if they're new to this, and as well as myself, who are these big names that we should be watching? Well, interesting, uh, Ryder finished second in the points last year, the 67M of Davis Fisher. Doesn't qualify very well. He's going to be coming from the second row in his heat race. Going to be very interesting to see uh, him attempt to move forward on a track that's very difficult to pass, at least in my opinion right now. Right now it is very difficult to pass. It was very one line during qualifying time practice. Everybody taking the shortest way around the track on the inside of the groove. So it's going to open up a lot different. They're going to put a lot of moisture on the racetrack. They've already disked it up a lot. Uh, your fast qualifier in the GNC2 class was the 54A machine. On the KTM was Dan Bromley out of uh, Warrington, Pennsylvania. Chris, he's from up there in your neck of the woods. Uh, the kid's been getting fast. He's going to be riding some select events on the twin a little bit later on. We'll see it as we get into Springfield, but uh, the, the, the youngster is really fast. He's going real good. He's a real good short track rider, also real good in off-road. He's a second-generation racer. It's ironic. I raced against his father at Amateur Nationals back in the 70s, so uh, the kid's no stranger to the racetrack, uh, and he's one of our taller kids that we talked about earlier uh, on the, on, in the qualifying show. Uh, tall guys with a lot of leverage around this track that take up a lot of room. If he gets a good start, he could be very tough to pass. So, Danny, you're not that familiar with our sport as we've talked about earlier also, but you're going to get to learn it real quick. Uh, most of our riders throughout the history have been a lot shorter. There's been a few taller riders win. Uh, Brad Baker's one of the tallest Grand National Champions that we've ever had, but uh, Dan Bromley is one of the taller gentlemen, and he's fast qualifier in that GNC2 class. Bronson Bauman, the California rider, 30Z, qualified in the number two spot, and then Brandon Wilhelm, who won his first uh, GNC2 
race here last year, the 24J. He qualified third. Fourth was the 44E, another California rider. That is Nick Armstrong on the Honda. And rounding out your top five in his second professional race is the 11Z, Andrew Luker. He's also Honda mounted here tonight. Uh, I thought he was going to finish on top of the leaderboard in only his second professional event. So a great qualifying effort for that young rider. 11Z, Andrew Luker just celebrated his 17th birthday yesterday. It's very interesting about Andrew. One of his uh, one of his passions at home, one of the sports he plays, is football, and uh, he might have to get a little physical going into turn one. I think he's ready. <laughs> Absolutely, and Danny, uh, short track racing, it's a bar to bar, handlebar to handlebar there. You won't be making any friends here tonight for sure. I know a lot of people will leave here with their feelings hurt just a little bit. You never know what's going to happen. Also, our friends with uh, the Springfield Miles said any person wearing a Springfield Miles shirt tonight can get a free Springfield Miles, Miles sticker and poster. Stop by Jeffrey Carver's pit area number 23 to pick up your sticker and poster. You can also buy the Springfield Mile tickets as they are on sale down there in Jeffrey Carver's pit area. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Dave and Tom Marquiso are here here and they're the, the, the presenting sponsor this year of both the Springfield Miles. The first one coming up is our next race after tomorrow which will be May 24th. We'll see the twins for the first time. So that's a great event if people are in the Midwest come out to Illinois. It's not too far from you know your Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa. So it's a great Midwest race. It's, uh, it's a mainstay on our circuit going there twice a year throughout my entire career. Uh, great event. It's a great little promotion they do and good luck with them and their promotions. All right, well, they're saying Danny's going to go send. He's, he's going to go check out what's going on in the pit area. We're going to take a short break, I believe, here pretty soon, and we're going to meet our first rider here in the next couple of minutes. we got some great videos set up from Thunder McAfee. Uh, we've got a whole lot of cool stuff going on down here at Daytona Flat Track. Pit area, the open paddock session to meet the riders is going on right now. Chris, I'm ready for tonight's action. You know, I think uh, all the riders are – are more excited and more nervous than we are. I'm looking forward to seeing the green light grow on our first heat race here at 8 o'clock. Uh, hey, nothing better than being in Daytona in March to kick off the season. Before we take our first break, let's talk about our times. Yeah, first times. We'll get back to the times in just a little bit. We're going to take a short break. Hope everybody's enjoying the open paddock area here at the Daytona Flat Track, and we'll take a short break, and we'll be right back at the opening ceremonies coming up here soon. We're having a great time. We'll be back. Kimco USA, the official sponsor of AMA Pro Flat Track, performance without the high price. Watch for the Kimco scooters and side-by-sides around the track. From 50 cc's to 700 cc's, Kimco scooters, ATVs, and side-by-sides are always the choice for the highest quality at an exceptional value. Get more fun and style than you bargain for. Check out the complete line of Kimco scooters, ATVs, and side-by-sides at KimcoUSA.com. Kimco, choose your path. We at MotoBat are excited about the 2015 racing season and being the official battery charger and tester of AMA Pro Flat Track. We also are proud to sponsor the MotoBat Hard Charger Award, earned by an aggressive rider who passes the most competitors during an event. MotoBat is a manufacturer and distributor of unique, high-performance starting and charging solutions for today's power sports market. Learn more about these cool products at www.motobat.com and be sure to ask for your MotoBat products at your local stocking dealer. Thank you for attending today's event. Have fun. We're back down here live with the pre-race show. I've been joined by not only seven-time Grand National Champion Chris Carr, who's going to be co-hosting on Fans Choice all year long, but our defending Grand National Champion, the jammer, Jared Meese. Jared, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. How are you? Man, we are great. It's good to be down here in the sunshine, and, and we're looking forward to a great event. Uh, you, you didn't qualify as well as you'd like. I know you're 10th right now. That uh, assured yourself a, a front row start, but uh, what are you expecting here tonight? Well, always at night when the sun goes down, the racetrack's completely different. Uh, we turned our qualifying around after qualifying one. Uh, we were back around 31. Down up to, uh, got up to ninth there overall and um, maxed another rider's time and I got bumped to 10th. So it was a huge step in the right direction. You know, it's, uh, you know, you don't want to come down here and fast qualify, of course, but uh, being on the front row is the most important. What, uh, what kind of changes did you make between uh, the first round of qualifying and the second round? The whole motorcycle. I uh, jumped on my uh, backup motorcycle, had a little bit more power, and uh, was able to, you know, catch a, a quick lap time, and I felt a lot more comfortable on it. So what was the biggest difference between motorcycle number one and motorcycle number two, or do you not want to tell these riders that are sitting over here behind us? 
just a lot of things, uh, exhaust system, uh, camshaft, uh, compression, just a lot of things uh, that make uh, the motorcycle a little bit more peppy, I guess you could say. Yeah, so do you think you're going to go with a peppier version in the races, or do you think you're going to go with a less peppy one? I'm going to flip a quarter. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Jared doesn't want to tell anything about what's going on later on tonight. Well, Jared, you got the number one plate on your bike. It's going to be on your back, I'm sure. Uh, you, are you feeling any pressure being the defending Grand National Champion carrying that number one plate? Is it heavy? You know, in the past it definitely was, but uh, running the number one plate now for my third time in my career, I'm, I'm feeling a lot more confident, and it's kind of a challenge for me to, to get it again. You know, I, I have a lot more respect for, for riders and drivers and athletes that can go back-to-back -back championships, and I want to be one of those riders that do it. So uh, you're getting ready for the heat race here in a little while. Uh, what What is your focus between now and obviously a good start here at Daytona makes things a lot easier. What What do you focus on between now and then to to get yourself in the right mindset for when the green light goes? You know, just try to have fun. You know, we're down here racing motorcycles for a living and uh, it's a beautiful sunshine down here in Florida compared to what I'm used to back at home. So just try to, you know, have fun and enjoy the moment, enjoy the time, you know, being a Grand National Champion and being out here racing in Daytona is a, is a great dream come true. And just try to stay relaxed and um, take every minute how it comes. Taking a look back at the history of this racetrack, there's been three different racetracks here at the Daytona Flat Track you know, facility. This is now we're at the World Center of Racing. You haven't won here yet. What's it going to take to pull out a victory tonight? Consistency, I, I think a decent start here. Um, you know, as you can see, the times are so close. So getting in front of them is going to be the biggest key and staying out in front and just staying smooth and out of trouble. So what do you think it's going to take to win tonight? I mean, you're, you're going through all these preparations. You say you got to get a good start, but is there more to it than that? Is it just the start? No, not at all. A lot of it has to do with being consistent. Uh, a rider that goes out there and can click a one fast lap time versus a rider that might be a tenth off but can do 25. I'd rather be that rider that's a tenth off doing 25. So consistency is a big thing. And staying out of trouble, you know, staying out of the first turn pile ups or, or the run ins with somebody. You know, getting out, getting out of the gate clean and running 20, 25 consistent laps is what I think is crucial here to win. So, Jared, in the off-season, a lot of riders rode some ice racing, and I know you have a, a real strong workout regiment. What all goes on between Pomona, the last race of the season, your celebration, I know, and then you get focused for the 2015, se 2015 season. What happens up there? I know you live in Michigan. It's been cold. Do you get to ride at all? Do you train? What, what do you do in the off-season? This off-season, I approached it a little bit differently. I was very fortunate to uh, get invited to come to the Super Prestigio in Barcelona, Spain and uh, against, got to race against Mark Marquez as well as Brad Baker and a lot of other uh, very fast European, Europeans. And uh, so that was a lot of fun. That was right after Pomona, basically, middle of December. And then right after that uh, came the new year, and I got to go to the Troy Bayless Classic in uh, Australia and uh, raced the Troy Bayless Classic and was able to uh, bring home the win there. So uh, I had a very exciting off season, probably the most exciting that I ever had. Uh, as far as ice riding, I stayed off the ice a little bit. I was just pretty busy with all the traveling. Um, I went to California, did some testing with uh, Race Tech Suspension and Jimmy Wood, and uh, try to get a little bit more dialed in for Daytona. So my main focus through the whole offseason was uh, trying to benefit myself for Daytona. So uh, did you, if you had only one race to go to in the, in the offseason next year, if you had to pick Spain and a, a rematch with Marquez or – to go and defend uh, with at the Troy Bayless. If you, you you can't pick both. If you only had one, what's the one that you want to go do again? You know that is so tough to to answer that. I had a lot of fun. I will say at Australia, and the reason being was because I was there for almost two solid weeks, and uh, Troy Bayless really looked after me and uh, showed me a real home welcoming. Not saying that the Barcelona people didn't, but I guess I would have to say I have the challenge to go back and race Marquez and try to get that try to get that super prestigio win. I guess if I had to pick one, I'm always one for the challenge. But for a good time, Australia during the summertime down there is really cool. Well, you had a, you had a good showing there at uh, in in Barcelona at the Super Prestigio. You had a a slight bobble, I guess going into one. It wasn't your fault. The rider went down in front of you. you actually stalled the motor, 
refired the motor without even stopping. You did a wonderful job at that. Worked your way up, caught up to Marquez. I think maybe a lap or two you could have had him, but uh, I think you were doing the Americans proud and uh, carrying the number one plate down there and, and making it making it look really good. So we do, we do appreciate that. I know you got a, a lot of team sponsorship behind you. I know. Did anything change in the offseason? You're still riding for the same outfit. Yeah, definitely. You know, we it's hard to change something that's working really well. Um, we basically are the same exact team. We got a couple small sponsors that uh, stepped on board with carrying the number one plate. But, you know, the biggest shout out to uh, Rogers Racing, SDI Insulation, and Montgomeryville Cycle Center for the singles program. And I have a really good uh, tuner, as Chris Carr knows, Kenny Tolbert and uh, Sammy Sweet. We have a great time week in and week out, and um, it shows, you know, why we have that number one plate because we have a lot of fun. Well, let me ask you this. This is a real important question now. Um, who's going to win the first race in the 2015 AMA Pro Flat Track Series? Who is going to win it? Well, we're testing your confidence now. So I came here to win it, so I'm picking myself. Well, good for you. That's why you got the number one plate. Confidence is what it takes to go to the front. Any less of an answer, I would have been pretty disappointed. That's the jammer, Jared Meese, national number one. We're going to go down in the pit area and meet our third member of our broadcast team. She's roaming around the pit areas. Let's throw it down to Danny. and meet these guys, shake hands, take pictures, take selfies, whatever it is. We have perfect weather here in Daytona. It's my first time here. I'm excited to meet fans, so if you're around, come say hi. Tell me how excited you are to be here. All right, we're back up here on the stage, and we welcome up here uh, for the first time ever. We're going to have a brother and sister with grand national numbers, and this lady right here got her national number last year. She moved into the GNC1 ranks last year, made several main events. Please welcome national number 52, Shayna Sexter. Shayna, how are you feeling tonight? Oh, not too bad. It's uh, it's my birthday down here in Daytona tonight, so what better way to celebrate than being here at the short track? Well, how old are you? <laughs> oh, you just turned 16, I'm sure I can tell. Look, she looks like she's 16. Tell us how old you are again. I'm 24. 24 years old. She's awful small. She's really fast on the big tracks, but she is here right now, and uh, we're going to have a presentation for you later on during opening ceremonies is amanationalnumber.com. But uh, tell us what it's like representing with a national number. It's a new number you haven't ran before, number 52 on the number plate. Uh, you've been number 25 your entire career. That was one of your dad's number. Your brother, Corey, also he runs one of your dad's former numbers, number 65. So tell us what it's like your first outing on the number 52. Uh, it, it's been going great. You know, it was really hard trying to decide what number I was going to go with. And uh, it was between 50 and 52, which was uh, my number backwards. And uh, I just started playing with it a little bit. And uh, at the end of the day, I realized there was a cross between the middle of my two numbers. And uh, that really just set it off for me. And uh, I've been running with it ever since. I got to ask you, I, I looked at the lineups in uh, your heat race. You're lined up directly behind your brother. You're on the, on the second row and he's on the front row. Uh, is that is that like a goal, a little target, or is, it, is he a carrot? I mean, is there a little rivalry between uh, older brother and younger sister? I didn't I didn't even know this is new news to me, so <laughs> I'm gonna have to think about this a little bit. But definitely, he's got a target on his back. I know uh, if I know one person on the track where he's at in times, that's him for sure. So, did you take a look at, at and did you work with Corey during a practice and qualifying, or did you go out there and, and do your own thing with your own team? How did that go down in, in the Texter pit area? Yeah, no, we're separate this weekend. Uh, he's riding for Memphis Shades, Babe, Babe DeMay, and I'm out here with DFW Honda, McElroy Package, and Crosley. So we're just doing our own thing, and, uh, you know, if I have questions or he has questions, we'll work together. But right now our heads are down, and uh, we're focused on our own game. Well, I, I also see the rider sitting on the pole in your heat race is the number 14 rider, and uh, is, there, is there any incentive to, to maybe chase that kid down too? You know, it, it's such a special story there a little bit. Uh, not a lot of people know, but I actually built number 14's motorcycle <laughs> for the race here. So it's, uh, you know, it's a super special feeling. Last year we got the win, and uh, this year he's on the poles. So, uh, you know, I'm really happy for him, and uh, he's been working hard, and uh, I think it's going to be a good night. So if, if he finishes real well tonight, how, how much of a cut of the purse do you get for building his bike? <laughs> All I told him is he better thank me first. <laughs> well, he, he told me he was going to thank me on the podium first. We might have to argue a little bit because I told him last year, you know, this year is going to be my birthday, so we better repeat it. So we're talking about the 14, Briar Bauman, who is our fast qualifier. Got his first victory of his career right here uh, last year, and he's looking for his second one. Uh, he's a super excited young man. Uh, you actually, you guys, uh, 
You two are actually dating, and, and it's a pretty cool relationship, except for he lives in California. You live in Pennsylvania, so you guys meet at the racetrack, and then you guys share, you know, you, you stay at different places when you can to make it work, and, and that's the life of a professional flat track racer. Yeah, it's worked out really well the last couple of years because we have some West Coast rounds, East Coast rounds, but uh, his family's actually moving to Illinois uh, in the next couple of weeks, so he's moving a little bit closer, and, uh, you know, truthfully, him and I, we just do our own thing, and uh, wherever uh, it works out, we stay at that house. All right, so that's all cool and everything. Your boyfriend's moving closer, but, you know, we're racing tonight. He's in your heat race along with your brother. You know, get down to the final laps, and you're sitting in fifth, and one of them's in fourth, and fourth place goes to the main event. For more than 100 you know, years, racing I mean, has Is the game on, or are you going to be nice to your boyfriend or your brother? No, definitely not. We went uh, we went go-karting the other night, and he spun me twice, and I got hit head-on twice. So uh, payback. hopefully, yeah, payback. So hopefully do the same thing somewhere across the course this year. Shana, what's it going to take to pull out a victory here tonight? I know you're starting on row number two, as we've just mentioned, but uh, what's it going to take to get a victory, and, and uh, what are your goals coming into tonight? Yeah, Daytona is always, uh, you know, a challenging race for me just because of my size. But, uh, you know, I feel like we've been doing really well and proving every time we're here. I didn't uh, get a clean of a track as I wanted in qualifying, but uh, we got the setup where I'm happy, and uh, it's going to be getting a good start and uh, being aggressive for sure. So uh, what's a good result for you tonight? What's, what's the goal for Shana Texter uh, kicking off this 2015 season? making the main you know my dad always told me Daytona's bonus points and uh, you know if I could make the main event that would be a huge step in my career great that is national number 52 Shana Texter the uh, first brother and sister to ever have grand national numbers ever in the history of our sport so we're gonna take a short break and we'll be right back with our opening show right here at Daytona flat track round number one for more than 100 years racing has been the heart and soul of Harley-Davidson Motor Company Generations of champions have worn the orange and black and ridden our legendary motorcycles to countless winter circles. And their spirit of victory and passion for excellence lives today in every motorcycle we build. Visit your local Harley-Davidson dealer to witness the evolution of a legend for yourself. For more than 100 years, racing has been the heart and soul of Harley-Davidson Motor Company. Generations of champions have worn the orange and black and ridden our legendary motorcycles to countless winter circles. And their spirit of victory and passion for excellence lives today in every motorcycle we build. Visit your local Harley-Davidson dealer to witness the evolution of a legend for yourself. Bruce Rossmeyer's Daytona Harley-Davidson has been your hometown dealer, active in the community, and family owned and operated for over 20 years. In addition to selling the world's greatest motorcycles, our 109,000 square foot facility has everything Harley-Davidson, along with the best selection of new and pre-owned motorcycles. Come visit Bruce Rossmeyer's Harley-Davidson or shop BruceRossmeyer.com. Please check out the new line of merchandise at the official AMA Pro Flat Track Trailer. 2015 brings new products from t-shirts, hoodies, koozies, and more. The official AMA Pro Flat Track team has special deals each week, so please stop by and check us out. Kimco USA, the official sponsor of AMA Pro Flat Track, performance without the high price. Watch for the Kimco scooters and side-by-sides around the track. From 50 cc's to 700 cc's, Kimco scooters, ATVs, and side-by-sides are always the choice for the highest quality at an exceptional value. Get more fun and style than you bargained for. Check out the complete line of Kimco scooters, ATVs, and side-by-sides at KimcoUSA.com. Kimco, choose your path. Pre-show activity still going on. The open paddock area for the Ryder fan autograph session is happening right here at Daytona Flat Track. Round number one, we are anxious to get the show started alongside uh, doing some color commentating this year up here in the booth is seven-time Grand National Champion Chris Carr. Chris, what are you expecting here tonight? Well, typical Daytona, I, I think we're going to definitely see some fireworks before, during, and after this race. Uh, Daytona tempers... Everybody's been kind of on edge all winter long, ready to get going. I'll be very uh, shocked if it, it's not a, a, a perfect clean night. Uh, I think these guys are going to be going after each other. Do you think the track is going to change very much from what we saw earlier in qualifying time practice to the heat races? It typically does. I think the racetrack is going to be quite a bit different. Uh, it was somewhat on the dry side when they, when they entered the track and, and went out for practice. 
Uh, the track has been skimmed a little bit with the, with the motor grader. They've thrown a lot of water down on it. As the sun starts to set, it's gonna evaporate a lot less. I think the racetrack that they, they get for the first heat race is gonna be quite a bit different than what they rode this afternoon. That's the wisdom of Chris Carr right there. Now let's go down to, uh, to in the pit area somewhere. We'll talk to our third member of our crew. That is Danny Medin. Brad Baker, welcome to Daytona. First race, we have a lot to discuss. So you're coming off an injury for one. Can you inform the fans a little bit about what happened? Yeah, um, definitely coming off a couple injuries. Uh, I went down in early December when we were at the Super Prestigio in, in Barcelona, Spain, and I uh, ended up dislocating my shoulder and that ended up fracturing my humerus and uh, took out a couple ligaments and tendons and, and tore everything up a little bit in my shoulder, but uh, nothing too serious where I had to have surgery in my shoulder. Um, but then I, I ended up getting back in the rehab a couple weeks later for my shoulder and my elbow was making a pretty bad clicky clack noise and uh, ended up uh, breaking the radial head replacement that I had put in previous that year in April. Um, when I, in April before Springfield round three last year, uh, I broke both my ulna and my radius and then my radius was replaced and uh, in that crash in Spain I ended up uh, breaking that radial head replacement and essentially happened to have half my elbow replaced again for the second time. Uh, had some complications in my first surgery uh, and things didn't go so well and ended up having to, to get surgery on it for a second time again and, and eventually had uh, that go well and things went smooth. But it's been about six and a half weeks since I had my last surgery to the day. So you can imagine the, the hard work that I've had to put in to, to get myself just to the physical fitness I am right now to be able to come out and, and attempt to compete here at Daytona. So uh, it's been a pretty rough three months uh, to say the least. So. It just feels good to be here in Daytona and be able to make a go at to get as many points as I can, really. Well, it's a fresh start for you. There's a new number. Tell us a little bit about the number six. Uh, the number six kind of means a lot to me. Uh, the first number I actually ran on a 50 when I was younger was number six. Uh, it's kind of half of the number that I started out with, number 12. Um, had a bunch of good riders. Randy Goss is one of them, uh, a former factory Harley-Davidson rider as well. Um, so number six is pretty cool. I like the looks of it. It's just an honor to have that single digit on your on your plate, on your bike, um, just like the, a lot of the legendary racers that have held it once before. So Now you were the 2013 champ. What's going to happen this season? Uh, well, you know, every time the goal, you know, the goal is to come into a, a season and, and want to win the championship. Uh, this year, obviously, starting off injured, um, it's going to be a little bit harder. But uh, you know, it's still the main goal would be to win the championship. After you win it once, you know, you really can't set anything less than that. So, uh, got a got a good racers. You know, Jared is holding it now. Uh, we got Kenny, Coolbeth, Jake Johnson. You know, there's a couple of good riders that have held the number one plate a couple of times that want it just as much as I do. So it's not going to be a walk in the park by any means, but uh, hopefully at the end of the year I'll, I'll have that number back. Let's sum it up real quick for the fans here in the fans viewing. Why should they cheer on Brad Baker this season? Uh, if you like underdogs uh, and you want to cheer for an underdog right now, it would probably be me. So. Uh, Anyhow, I mean, I, I just uh, have a good team behind me, and uh, we got a lot of good people here in the pits, but I think uh, I have a good, really good personal attitude, and uh, with uh, what I've had to overcome and, and how hard I've had to work, uh, I think I deserve it just as much as anybody. So thank you guys very much for tuning in. Awesome. Scotty and Chris, I think you have a special guest waiting, so I'm going to throw it back to you guys. That's right. That's welcome right. back welcome up here to, to fanschoice.tv. Fans we'd like to, like to welcome Keith McCarty, Keith McCarty with Yamaha. Yamaha. Keith, how are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me. We appreciate it. How are things going with Yamaha? Are you excited to have a Yamaha twin going to be uh, debuting at the May 24 Springfield Mile? Yes. Um, you know, I think uh, the debut was last weekend, I believe, with Babe DeMay. And I'm really excited that he jumped on it and got one out there and had a chance to show what that FC07 can do and get things rolling. But, yeah, it's uh, very exciting for us, and we're really looking forward to it. Well, I, I took the opportunity to, I asked Babe if I, for permission to sit on the, the new FZ07 that he put together down at Savannah. And my first impression was that the bike was very narrow. Uh, everything appeared to be in all the, the right places. Watching it with Corey Texter going around the racetrack, uh, uh, it appeared to be pretty competitive right out of the box. What, what's the plans for Yamaha in the future and, and uh, how far do you see this going? 
You know, right now we've, uh, my goal was to really focus on getting an engine package for a, a reasonable amount of money that we could deliver to dealers or teams, whoever, whatever they wanted. And knowing, you know, that everybody likes to do their own thing. That's one thing about flat track that, you know, everybody wants to, to tweak on it a little bit and uh, do their own thing. But, you know, we wanted to deliver an engine that could uh, be competitive right away. And, um, you know, a lot of the teams, if they wanted to spend extra money to do it, if not, then I think they would have a reasonable power plant. So that includes the cylinder head, camshafts, ECU, and, uh, you know, pipe if they wanted, or at least some dimensions to help them along. So that's, that's kind of what was our big goal, and uh, work with the CNJ to get, a, get the frames out there to the people that wanted them early. So really it was just to allow everybody that wants to run the Yamaha to get out there and get things going as soon as possible. Keith, uh, we know Babe DeMay had the first one that just debuted. Like you said, they, they brought it out of the box last week. It was really fast. They had just a few little issues they got to work on, which uh, bringing a new, a new bike into flat track will happen. Uh, how confident are you in putting a Yamaha on a box at a, at, a, at a Grand National, possibly even as early as May 24th at the Springfield Mile? Um, well, that's a big question because, as you know, it's not only about the bike or the engine. It takes a rider to do that as well. And, um, you know, again, there's a lot of guys that are locked into rides, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, to have one or two guys out there might make it a little tougher to do that. But I'm confident that some of these teams that are on the fence about what uh, bikes or brands they choose to work with, um, in the future they might look at the Yamaha to see that it is competitive and we as a company are willing to work with them and offer them uh, good pricing on parts and things and, and uh, maybe a little bit more down the road. You know, right now it's about the engine trying to get that right. And uh, you know we have we, we love racing. We wanna we wanna be involved as much as we can. We've jumped in with the contingency program for both the GNC one and GNC two classes. Both of them are uh, upgraded a little bit from the past. Um, we've been it brought them into this G, uh, Blue Crew um, uh, you know system that we have really where our contingencies pay, paid out. So you know we got to start somewhere. And um, I'm just I'm excited to be here tonight for the first race of the season to see all these guys. Um, when I've been to Daytona before, it's always been about road racing, and honestly, I haven't been able to watch at this track, so I'm very excited tonight to do that. Well, it, it, Keith, it's great to see that, that Yamaha is going through the steps that it takes to support the, t the privateer teams and get them the, the materials that they need. But as a company, do you foresee Yamaha potentially having a factory team, as we've seen in the past in other forms of motorcycle racing? Um, I'd say if it was up to me, I'd have it now, but it's not just up to me. But, uh, you know, certainly I'm trying to show Yamaha the benefits of us being involved. And I believe me, they're welcoming this with open arms. So, uh, you know, this is really about the economy and what and the, the other things that we do. And um, as much as I'd like to say, yes, we're going to, I don't think I would make that statement today. Um, honestly, I think I think. For us just to come in guns a blazing would be the wrong thing to do. I think we need to establish the brand in the market, get people to believe that both of these bikes could help win them a Grand National Championship. And, and uh, you know, as we can do more, we will do more. Great. Well, thank you for coming along to the FansChoice.tv uh, pre-race show. We appreciate you stopping by. And I appreciate you asking me here. That was Keith McCarty with Yamaha. Now let's go trackside. I believe our co-host Danny has caught up to the flying tomato, Kobe Carlisle. Seat over here, 36B, GNC2 rider. First off, tell me a little bit about the whole flying tomato nickname. Uh, I guess they gave it to me because uh, if you look at my hair, it's pretty red. And I guess that just stuck as soon as the first time I got called it. And I, I kind of like it. I'm a lot separate and people can notice who I am right away. So we're here at Daytona, first race of the season. Do you have some pre-race jitters? Yeah, this morning I woke up and I didn't want to eat anything, but my mom made me, so uh, I was pretty nervous, but now I'm feeling a lot better than this morning. What's the coolest part about being at the first race of the season, being being back on the bike? What's going on up there? Uh, you just don't know who's going to be fast or not, and we're just hoping for the best, and there's so much hype around this race, and there's so many fans here that are just diehards and they love it. What do you think about the open pit stuff? Is this like the coolest thing for fans? Yeah, it's awesome. I just had some little, uh, probably three or four year olds come up here and they wanted autographs and it was so cute and I'm just glad I could sign it and make their day. Now let's talk racing. What are some changes, if any, from last year to this year? 
Uh, this winter I moved out to Kentucky to, to J.D. Beach and the Gillum household to train with them a lot, and I think that's one positive in my program. It's helped a lot so far today, and I can tell like it's a van and stuff. Now, some fans are new to this. There's a lot of new viewers watching. Talk about the J.D. Beach connection. J.D., we hooked up a couple years ago at the DeCoin Indoor, and everyone knows J.D. Beach. He's super fast, uh, great road racer and part-time dirt tracker, and he's doing great today. So, fan, you on the season? Uh, mainly because I'm probably going to do great, and my hair is flaming red. <laughs> All right, Chris and Scotty, take it away. All right, we're back here at the pre-show up here on the center stage. I'm Scotty Dubler, beside me, seven-time champion Chris Carr. Chris, uh, we got a lot of cool stuff happening. The paddock area is open right now for fans to come down here and meet the riders. A lot of cool stuff happening. Any person wearing a Springfield Mile t-shirt tonight can get a free Springfield Mile sticker and poster. Stop by Jeffrey Carver's pit, number 23, to pick up sticker and poster. You can also buy Springfield Mile tickets there. Uh, another cool thing is happening is Aid to Injured Riders has a brand new uh, a deal to raise money for injured riders, and it is the trading cards. We used to have flat track trading cards back in, I think, 1991 was the last time we had them. Do you know any more information about those? Uh, Buzzco track pack from 1991. I got a few sets of those, but it's been uh, since then that we've had something like this. And uh, Aid to Injured Riders is a great organization run by a lot of the wives and the girlfriends of the racers here at, uh, at AMA Pro Flat Track. And go see Jake Johnson, his wife, uh, Jody, as well as uh, Chad Coase and his girlfriend, uh, Jen, uh, I, that's the place to get them. I believe they're twenty-five dollars a set, and all the proceeds go to benefit riders who are injured in AMA Pro competition. Which it does happen. Our ch our sport is very rough, and it's tight, especially here at Daytona. It's short, uh, you're real tight, you know, closed course. Uh, Danny been enjoying the fan walk. There's a lot of people out there. Uh, you got to meet some of our riders. What are you thinking so far? Everyone's really excited. I I want racing to start. I'm ready. Let's do this. Now that's my favorite part, too. We'll have the uh, coverage. We'll have three people uh, helping us out here at FansChoice.tv. Seven-time champ Chris Carr. What's it going to take to win here tonight? I, I think the biggest thing is riders are going to have to get a clean start and, a, and more importantly, a clean first lap because the race uh, can't be won the first lap around but can certainly be lost. Danny, were there any surprises that you saw in qualifying? I know most of the time it was one at a time. They kind of got spread out. Uh, what are you thinking so far? You know, the biggest thing for me is that being this as my first race ever at, at this level with these guys, I'm I'm waiting to see if times are going to drop. You said they're not going to, but I'm wondering if, if when we get into race mode, those that we're going to be getting faster and well, faster as the well, day goes on. Well, Chris was nailing everything. He was uh, spot on during all of our qualifying practice, but uh, we'll get more into that in just a little bit. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back with the opening show right here, the pre-show at Daytona Flat Track. For more than 100 years, racing has been the heart and soul of Harley-Davidson Motor Company. Generations of champions have worn the orange and black and ridden our legendary motorcycles to countless winter circles. And their spirit of victory and passion for excellence lives today in every motorcycle we build. Visit your local Harley-Davidson dealer to witness the evolution of a legend for yourself. Bruce Rossmeyer's Daytona Harley-Davidson has been your hometown dealer, active in the community, and family-owned and operated for over 20 years. In addition to selling the world's greatest motorcycles, our 109,000-square-foot facility has everything Harley-Davidson, along with the best selection of new and pre-owned motorcycles. Come visit Bruce Rossmeyer's Harley-Davidson or shop BruceRossmeyer.com. Please check out the new line of merchandise at the official AMA Pro Flat Track trailer. 2015 brings new products from t-shirts, hoodies, koozies, and more. The official AMA Pro Flat Track team has special deals each week, so please stop by and check us out. Sunoco, the official fuel of AMA Pro Flat Track, would like to welcome all the race fans and thank the entire AMA Pro community for their continued support. In the same way Sunoco keeps AMA Pro moving, they keep you moving. Stop by your local Sunoco today and visit Sunoco Racing on Facebook. Enjoy the race. Kimco USA, the official sponsor of AMA Pro Flat Track, performance without the high price. Watch for the Kimco scooters and side-by-sides around the track. From 50 cc's to 700 cc's, Kimco scooters, ATVs, and side-by-sides are always the choice for the highest quality at an exceptional value. 
Get more fun and style than you bargained for. Check out the complete line of Kimco scooters, ATVs, and side-by-sides at KimcoUSA.com. Kimco, choose your path. For more than 100 years, racing has been the heart and soul of Harley-Davidson Motor Company. Generations of champions have worn the orange and black and ridden our legendary motorcycles to countless winner's circles. And their spirit of victory and passion for excellence lives today in every motorcycle we build. Visit your local Harley-Davidson dealer to witness the evolution of a legend for yourself. We are back here at the pre-show. Bruce uh, Rossmeyer's we, the, the Daytona stage Harley got a little bit more crowded. Chris home. Carr on the far side. Michael Gentry has is, is joined us. Michael, how are you feeling about tonight's event? Very good. Beautiful weather, great crowd, good show so far. We're excited about the weekend. Where would you find this beard roaming around out there? He's looking for some warmer weather. Well, I think he found it. Maybe it's time to shave that beard off. This is Chris Schooner with Harley Davidson Motor Company. Chris, uh, you and Michael up here, I, got, I know both of you guys have a very special announcement to make. Thank you, Scotty. We do. We're pleased to announce that Harley Davidson has uh, taken on our series uh, title sponsor for GNC1 this year with a lot of new benefits that they've added. Uh, we feel real good about it for what it's doing for our series. Of course, Harley Davidson and their iconic uh, tradition in our sport and they're big supporters, so we're very pleased to make this announcement tonight. We're thrilled to be here in 112 years of our company in existence and racing for nearly the entire time. We are so proud to be involved with the great sport of flat track and are proud to be the title sponsor of the GNC1 class. Well, that's cool. So it's going to be now the Harley-Davidson uh, GNC1 class presented by Vance & Hines. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Man, that, that's going to be a mouthful for Chris Carr, who's just getting, you know, getting his feet wet up here in the booth. Well, Chris is pretty fast on the track. I'm sure he can be pretty fast on the mic. So it's the GNC1. Uh, oh, wait, Harley-Davidson Harley GNC1 presented by Vance & Hines. That is correct. Awesome. All right. Well, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. We're, it's always fun being in Daytona. This is the start of our season. This is when everything warms up across the country, and we're just thrilled. What does the sponsorship mean to not only our riders, but uh, to Harley-Davidson Motor Company? Well, it, it means it puts some money in the pockets of the riders that, that finish in the top. We're, we have a points fund that uh, pays every racer that finishes in the top five in the GNC1 class. And I'm proud to announce that the top Harley uh, that finishes the end of the season will get a twenty-five thousand dollar bonus. Did you hear that, Chris? You want to put your leathers on? I got. I got. So I have to clarify this for everybody in the pit area too. So in order to collect money from Harley Davidson, you don't necessarily have to be on a Harley. Is not that to not to be in the top five. That is correct. But to to qualify for the bonus, every uh, point that you gain on a Harley Davidson is how you qualify for the awesome. twenty-five thousand dollar points fund. That is so awesome, Chris Gunnar. Thanks for coming over here and breaking the news right here. And thanks for being our title sponsor. Uh, we look forward to a, a great twenty fifteen season. My pleasure. Thank you all. That is Chris Schoonover with Harley-Davidson Motor Company announcing the new title sponsor of the GNC1 class. It's good to have Harley-Davidson on board. Uh, does it make you want to put your leathers back on, give it a whirl? Well, my, my racing days are over. They're going to be fun. I don't think I need to go out there and mix it up with these, uh, these hot dogs in the GNC1 class. So, uh, but I think it's great to see Harley-Davidson step up. Uh, it sounds to me uh, like you don't necessarily have to be on a Harley to collect some of their support of the sport, and it's that's a that's a great thing to see. We welcome them back with open arms, and uh, we look forward to a good, prosperous year for all the racers and teams. And it is good, like you said, it, uh, it's going to pay people that aren't only just riding Harley Davidsons, but again, the Harley Davidson that finishes the highest up is going to get a big check at the end of the year. Harley Davidson's been with Flat Track for as long as we can remember, and it is good to have them back on board. Harley Davidson GNC One Class presented by Vance and. So that's a pretty good mouthful, but it's awesome to get more sponsorships involved in our in our series. Uh, get a little more extra money for these riders to make each round. Well, as a as a rider that ran his own team for 15 years, the last 15 years of my career, uh, any kind of support you get, not only from uh, inside the industry but outside the industry, is going to go a long way and help these racers and teams make it to and from all the races week in and week out. And uh, it's great to see the long-term support that Harley-Davidson has provided with this series. 
Well, we appreciate it. We, uh, we've had a great opening here at the opening show. First time ever, FansChoice.tv. The fans have been great down here. The open paddock area has been wonderful. So uh, that is it for our opening show. we got opening ceremonies kicking off here tonight at 7.30. The first heat race will start Daytona at uh, 8 o'clock right here at Daytona Flat Track. Thanks for being a part of the pre-race show. For more than 100 years, racing has been the heart and soul of Harley-Davidson Motor Company. Generations of champions have worn the orange and black and ridden our legendary motorcycles to countless winner's circles. And their spirit of victory and passion for excellence lives today in every motorcycle we build. Visit your local Harley-Davidson dealer to witness the evolution of a legend for yourself.